Welcome back, guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, let's take a few minutes to look at some of the oddities that I ran into setting up the Raspberry Pi 4. Stick around, and we'll get right to it. All right, so the first time I booted up my Pi 4, uh, and I'm running Buster, the one uh, dated July of 2019, uh, the first time I booted it up, I had a couple of odd things uh, that were going on with it. So I'm hoping, I, I went back and reflashed the card, and I'm hoping that I can replicate some of those uh, on the video so you guys can see it. Uh, and really the only thing I tried to do was uh, get into it with VNC and then get the hotspot uh, script running that I did a video on just a while back. So let's try it again and see what happens. So I know that the Pi's IP address uh, is 10.4.36.197. So I'm going to go ahead and SSH into that. And it's telling me I've made a mistake there. Hang on one second. I'll be right back. All right, so my Mac gave me a warning about uh, something to do with man in the middle. I just had to go in and regenerate some SSH keys. So let's uh, try that again and see if we can get into it via SSH. And the default password, which is raspberry. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is sudo raspy-config. Uh, Oop, got to spell it right. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and turn on, uh, from the interface uh, interfacing options, I'm going to come down here and turn on VNC. Okay, and then I'm going to leave this right here for a minute. This was the first odd thing I've noticed. I've never had to do this in the past. I'm kind of curious to see if it'll happen again. Usually, once you've enabled that, you can jump right over to your VNC viewer and log in. So we're going to try it and see what happens this go around. Yeah, I'm getting the same thing. This uh, cannot currently show desktop. And I've never run into this before. Um, so I'm, I'm not exactly sure what's going on. I did figure out how to overcome it. So I'm just going to um, exit out of that. Let's jump back over to the Pi that we've SSH'd into. And I'm going to come down to Advanced Options. And then Resolution. And I'm just going to set it for the 1920 by 1080. Uh, so I'll enter that, say OK, and it's going to force me when I try to exit to reboot. Uh, so we'll go ahead and reboot, and I'll be right back as soon as the machine comes back up. So I didn't log back in with SSH. I only waited a couple of minutes and then uh, went ahead and tried through VNC. This time the uh, connection was successful. So it's telling me that my default username, password, all that, so security risk, yeah, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to click cancel here. Um, now, this was something else I noticed that was odd. When uh, you click on this, before I've always just seen a list of Wi-Fi SSIDs that were available. Uh, they've changed something in, in Buster, apparently. So you have to go ahead and click to set your Wi-Fi country. Now, I don't know if this created a problem when I was doing the auto hotspot or not initially, but this time I'm going to try setting this to begin with. So I'm just going to scroll down, pick the United States, and say OK. Now, when I click on this, I should see a list of... Uh, you know, available SSIDs, but I'm not even going to mess with that right now. I'm going to go ahead and open up the browser. Let me set this so it's a little better for you guys to view. Whoop. Uh, yeah, so let's make that, I don't know, maybe about, oop, maybe not that big, maybe 24. Select and OK. Yep, ooh, I might even be a little big. All right, let's make that just a touch smaller. Um... Uh, Make that maybe around 15. I think the resolution being different is messing with me a little bit. All right, maybe you guys can see that. So I'm just going to move over to the downloads directory. And then I'm moving over to uh, my auto hotspot script. And I'm going to click on the raw file. 
Uh, now, if you haven't seen the Auto Hotspot script, I'll leave a link to that right up at the top, and you can uh, follow along. I'm kind of rushing through this uh, just because I wanted to show some of the issues that you might run into. All right, so let's go ahead and do the wget command and download that file. And then we'll change that so that it's executable. All right, and yes, it's showing executable. So let's go ahead and install it or uh, run the script so that stuff can be installed. Um, you know what, before we do that, let me make, let me run a quick upgrade. And I don't, since I just downloaded this, I doubt there's any, yeah, there's nothing to be upgraded. So let's go ahead now and run the uh, auto hotspot script with sudo and the auto hotspot in dash setup. All right, and we'll give this just a couple of seconds. I'll fast forward the video right here uh, so you don't have to sit through all of it. All right, so it comes up here and wants to know what password I want to use for the hotspot. So uh, when you try to connect to the Pi's hotspot from your wireless device, this is a password that you'll use. And yes, that's correct. And then it's going to ask you for the shack Wi-Fi that you want to connect to. So I'm going to connect it to my other Pi, uh, my primary machine, because its hotspot is turned on and running. So cam4ck-portable. And then the password for that one. And again, it's going to ask me if, I, uh, if that information is correct. It is. And reboot so we'll go ahead and reboot and i'll be back in just a second all right so now that it's rebooted you'll see that it did go ahead and connect to my portable now i want to see this so i'm going to open up terminal and run hostname dash capital i and that's going to list out the uh, ip addresses that the pi has right now Okay, so what I'm seeing here, this one is my LAN uh, IP address, and this one over here is the one that my uh, other Raspberry Pi gave this uh, gave the new Pi for. So all of that makes sense right now. All right, so now we want to go ahead and test the hotspot and make sure that it's working correctly. Uh, so I'm going to head over to the video. This is the easiest Pi... Um, access point Wi-Fi hotspot uh, video that I did just a little while back and I'm going to scroll down to these helpful commands and links. I'm just going to copy this one and paste it in here and then go ahead and run that and this shows the SSID that I'm connected to currently. So what I want to do is I want to come down and change that to be unrecognizable. That way the Pi will assume that it can't see a hotspot and when we run the next command, it'll go ahead and turn on um, turn on the hotspot that we can connect to. So the next command is right here underneath it. Let's copy that and paste in. And let's see what happens here. All right, so it does say that, uh, well, no SSIDs were found and that it created the hotspot. I'm looking here, and wireless LAN 0 was stopped. So everything looks good up to this point. So now let's try to connect to um, that hotspot. So I just left it at its default name. You'll see it here, the RPI hotspot. So we'll go ahead and, yep, the, the Mac is connected to it. Now, earlier, yep, I've lost my connection, and that, that's not normal either. So I'm not really sure what's going on there because I can close this and connect right back up to it. Okay, but it looks like everything is working correctly. Now, the next thing I want to check is um, some guys have been saying that they've had issues with internet connections. Uh, well, tell you what, first, let's run the hostname command again. And now you'll see still two IPs here. This is uh, the LAN still, and this one over here 
is what I should be able to uh, connect to with VNC Viewer to get to it after I've connected to the hotspot. I happen this time around to have went through this one, but this one should work as well. Now, I do want to go over and check internet connection. And let's see if I have an internet. So um, here we go. We'll just click the next video up. And it looks like that that is playing fine. So, um, yep, and I'm still connected to the hotspot. So it looks like the internet is working. So a few little quirks uh, setting up the Pi 4 uh, that I just kind of wanted to address, especially that VNC not being able to show the desktop in the very beginning. Uh, that, that was kind of odd, but outside of that, it looks like everything is working correctly. So I'm going to run back in real quick, and we'll go ahead and fix this so it has the proper SSID to connect to. And we'll run the uh, hotspot command again. And just make sure it should shut this down, uh, shut down the hotspot, and recreate uh, the other one. Now, I may lose the connection again, which again is odd. I've never done, never had that to happen in the past, but uh, something may have changed inside of Buster. Oh, you know what? I am still trying, my Mac is still connected to that hotspot, and I need to be connected. Uh, well, let's see, I'll just connect to this one here. Now, let's see if I can't connect to it. Okay, yep, so it did find a uh, valid SSID. It shut the hotspot down. Uh, the hotspot was deactivated, and it checked the Wi-Fi connection, and it says it's okay. And yes, it is connected to the portable again. All right, well, there you have it. That's Buster uh, as of July 2019 running on the Pi 4. It. Uh, I, I was kind of uh, a little afraid that the script that I just released might not work with the Pi 4, but it looks like everything is up and working correctly. All right, guys, I hope this helped you out. Uh, watch out for those little uh, curveballs that uh, these new operating systems can throw at you every now and again. We'll be bringing you some more videos if I run into anything else that uh, is different on the Pi 4 versus uh, the Pi 3 running stretch. We'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, 7-3. Uh, a couple of minutes after I clicked the reboot. Let's try that again.